Hello learners, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. Today we move to the last lecture of module 9 where we are discussed learning. So today we will specifically look into learning in an organizational setting. I am Dr. Abraham Selaisak, I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So if you look into the previous lectures till now, this is the last lecture. So we looked into all the different learning aspects, we understood what specifically learning is, we looked into learning theories, we started with conditioning, both classical, then we were moved to operant, then we looked into the social element, the cognitive element, we ensured into the social learning theory specifically. Now we look into a different flavor of learning, more uh, sounded or more grounded on empirical research specifically. So we look into learning in organization setting. So the theme for today's lecture is they there are even shortcomings with merit pay mainly due to implementation issues. So many a time we understand that money can make us learn things. The problem when it comes to organization or organizational setting is that mainly or mostly it is not implemented in the right fashion. So that becomes a problem in itself in actually motivating the, motivating the individual under consideration to learn from that particular event. So that would be today's theme and we look into the role of organizational reward system. So we have extensively discussed into the basic concepts like reward, punishment, reinforcement, positive, negative, etc. The role of organizational reward system is very critical because positive reinforcement consequences are so important to employ behavior specifically, organizational reward systems become vital to behavioral performance management. So how an individual within an organization performs is almost now driven by his or her reward system that is being given to him within the organization. So what is that reward system that is being uh, you know bestowed or given to that particular individual in that particular organization that determines his or her performance specifically. So the challenge here for performance management people who are into the, the PM, performance management within the organization is to understand specifically this behavioral reality. Eliminate the reinforcers for the undesirable behavior because many a time when the implementation is not right, the reinforcers are given for undesired behavior. Let's understand by taking one example. We are looking into a particular individual who is not performing well in the organization. He is some or the other way the pet of one particular person who is a bit influential within the organization. But when we look into the whole concept or the whole organization as such, he does not find favor within that organizational setting otherwise. There is one individual who is having certain decision making power. He is very uh, good in, in connection with the others, he is in line or he is actually uh, in good friendship with this particular person. So what happens is that every single step he is getting promoted and you see this in front of your eyes. There are n number of examples that you can relate with this in, in your own organization. So the problem with that is when you are understanding that the reinforcement is happening for an undesirable behavior. That individual under consideration might be a very lethargic individual, he might be a very lazy uh, person, he might not be effective, he might not be actually doing things in a proper manner. So all these aspects which are certainly undesirable within the organizational setting are actually getting rewarded. Now this is where the implementation fault. This is where the implementation has faltered. For undesirable behaviors, you are actually giving reinforcers. And more importantly, we have to reinforce the desirable behavior. So that is when the learning happens and even the element of social learning is actually justified. 
if you are not in a position to actually justify the elements of social learning, you are making a wrong learning or you are actually facilitating a wrong learning atmosphere. So in few discussions in previous lectures, we have looked into the learning as the mastery climate or we have also looked into the performance based climate. Now in an organization, you may be proud of that you are part of an organization that that looks into or that has a mastery climate or that has a learning climate. But beware, if that learning is happening in a very restricted way, the, the learning is happening in a very negative fashion as discussed now, all these aspects might not be fruitful for not only you, but also the organization. So please understand when we are making ourselves, you know, giving ourselves air or making ourselves proud of that this is an organization that gives prime importance to learning, please understand whether the right learning is happening in that particular organization. And for that, the right reward system is essential for that particular organization. So let's understand the importance of money as a reinforcer. Many a time people tend to move away from this, this discussion, but in an organizational context, money is a very important reinforcer. You cannot take it out of the system. Please understand, there are people who tend to, you know, try to advocate that above the money, the work is important. Yes, all those aspects are correct, but our, uh, our understanding should not be restricted here. We should be very critical and very, in the same way, very, very open to the particular understanding that how money acts as a reinforcer. Recent analysis in most of the research study have concluded that money contingently administered can have a positive effect on employee behavior. Now, this is not something which, which otherwise we didn't know. This is something which we knew, but certain other theories were in counter purpose or in counter argument with this particular knowledge what we had. So there are even shortcomings with the merit pay, mainly due to the implementation issues. So this is our particular theme today. Even when we are underscoring or we even when we are focusing on merit pay, where the most meritorious candidate within the organizational system who does his or her job on time, who does his or her job within the use of limited resources, who does his job with utmost effectiveness. So we have covered the efficiency part as well as the effectiveness part. That is what merit pay is all about. But when it comes to the wrongful or the problematic implementation of merit pay, even that cannot act as a reinforcer. There are situations where there are organizations which do have merit pay as a critical reinforcer, but many a time it has backfired because of implementation issues pertaining to that. Now, some compensation practitioners even argue that merit pay only makes employees unhappy because they view it as an unfair way to reward for past performance. Now, this is very critical. When you look into the merit pay, uh, certain generally, generally the merit pay happens with respect to the past performance. But when we are in an organization and we are more focused on the, the future point, when we are more of a futuristic organization, we are more upbeat about the possibilities that the future is holding for the organization, we generally do not go for merit pay because that is what you have done in the past and that's what is being rewarded right now. Instead of being geared to improve future performance, if you are resorting to merit pay based on your past performance, you are actually an organization which is still uh, you know, enjoying its benefits or residing on the past laurels it had. More than that, there should be some, some reinforcer that is futuristic, that is looking for the organization in a futuristic point of view. Now let's look into some non-financial rewards. When money is the most obvious organizational reward, but there are, there are certain non-financial rewards that also exist that 
are receiving increased attention when it comes to research. Social recognition and attention being the most. Take it from me, ladies and gentlemen, money is an reinforcer, there is no doubt about it. But social recognition and attention that you are getting in an organization, that being a part of an organization, you are getting it. That is more vital, that is more important when it comes to an element as a reinforcer. Informally providing recognition and attention, let it could be as simple as a praise if it is genuine, not, not something like you are being uh, mocked upon. It, if it's a genuine praise, no doubt about it, that's, that's, a, that's a social recognition that you are getting, that's an attention that you are getting from the higher management. It tends to be a very powerful reinforcer to most of the people. There are hardly anybody, you know, there are people who tend to take praise and blame uh, in the same way that as water bounces off from a duck's skin. That there are people like that. But that said, those are very few. When you look into most of the individuals who are in the realm of organization, organizational behavior management, if you clearly study, we will see that most of them are actually motivated by reinforcer. Money could be a reinforcer which we have, which we have deeply uh, tried to dissect and understand. But above that, there are people who even a small recognition, a small attention from the boss, that is what they wanted. And they start performing without any doubt, they start performing at their level best. Now this is importantly informal social recognition based on valued persons. It could be either boss, it could be even a peer, even sometimes you, you need recognition from a subordinate. It happens, you think of situations where you are in good terms with the boss, you are uh, the most jovial guy in the organization, you are very much acknowledged and admired and appreciated in the organizational setup, but somewhere your subordinates don't think so. Your subordinates have a different feeling about you. You tend to dislike that work environment. Initially, you were very happy because your, your boss was uh, always appreciative about you. Your peers, your co-workers, they were always happy about how you executed things. They always admired or were at awe, how you actually delivered things on time with great efficiency and effectiveness. But moving ahead, you feel that somewhere your subordinates are not having the same view. They are not in the same page when it comes to your performance, when it comes to your behavior. So they have a altogether different viewpoint about you and this is actually eating you from inside. Now it could be even a friend or a spouse that actually brings you social recognition or attention that gives you a certain level of happiness and attention and appreciation may not only have a bigger impact as a reinforcer in behavioral management than money, but also than formal recognition programs. Sometimes we see that there is full fanfare that is done, full, full fancy posters that he is or she is the performer of the year or the performer of the month. But many a time, believe me, that more than that, a simple pat, a simple recognition, a simple attention, yes, I've seen your work, it's excellent. I've seen you, how you've delivered that work in a very diligent manner. I've seen your meticulous hard work. Just a word of praise will do much, much more benefits than a particular meeting or a formal gathering or a formal dinner or a gala dinner conducted for, for the particular recognition part. So please understand, there are certain non-financial rewards that are also vital when it comes to the reinforcer part. Now let's have an understanding of Kirkpatrick's model of learning evaluation. We are coming to the fag end of the learning and we should be able to understand how will learning be actually evaluated. Now we want to understand something and believe me, you cannot understand something if you cannot measure that. Please remember this, you can understand only something when you are able to measure, if you go into research, let me take a practical example for this. You go into research, there are some latent variables like, let's say personality, knowledge, knowledge sharing, knowledge hiding. This is my area, so I'm, I'm quite, uh, you know, vociferous about that. Otherwise, you can look into any particular leadership. All these are latent areas. So how do you understand? How do you proclaim? How do you conclude that X is better than Y? 
How do you say that this behavior is better than why or this personality of that individual is better than why? Because all this can be measured by some or the other way. If it can be measured, it could be understood. So when we are coming to the fag end of the module which concerns about learning, we have to understand how you actually measure that learning ha has actually happened and Kirkpatrick's model of learning evaluation helps us here. So there are certain vital elements when it comes to these measurements. The first is reaction. When we look into reaction, we, we generally look into the surveys, how the people have performed, how the people have actually reacted or how the, the training, let's understand the training program that has been conducted. Now when we look into the training pro program, we generally take a feedback survey, maybe in, in a scale of, we, we use a Likert scale, Likert scales are scales on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 to 7, etc. You must have seen, uh, you know, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree strongly agree so things like that they we generally take a feedback how was the training program boss uh, was the instructor able to communicate whatever he or she wanted to how was the course content was he or she able to deliver most of the content that was promised so all these aspects pertain to the reaction part of that measurement now comes the second important element which is learning so you tend to see the learning. What is the learning that has happened? So you tend to, uh, maybe you, uh, you tend to ask the particular individual or the group about maybe some, some questions could be uh, given, some, some small tests could be actually distributed. Actual evaluation happens about the learning that has happened because of the training program. The third important aspect is behavior. Now, the learning essentially was undertaken or the entire training program was undertaken to have a behavioral change. Please understand the theme of the entire module is learning is useless if it is not leading to behavioral change. In, in the earlier lectures, I have actually tried to emphasize, re-emphasize this particular notion. So when it comes to behavior, please understand that how the training has actually changed the behavior. So there is some element of understanding that's captured in terms of reaction. Then we generally go to the learning where we actually give them a test or some sort of evaluation is conducted where we try to understand or score them in terms of the learning, then we tend to focus on the behavior, how the behavior is being conducted or how the behavior change has obtained. We may ask them to, you know, enact something, we may ask them to recreate a situation, something like this will actually give us some idea about how the behavior has actually changed. And finally, we come to the results part where we tend to get a final rating on what is the level of understanding with respect to the learning or the training program that was conducted and what is the actual learning that has happened within the training program. So when it comes to uh, individual specific learning, let's, I, I took an example of a particular training program. The Kirkpatrick's model actually helps in actually finding out the learning measures that have happened or it gives us a, a clinical understanding of the learning that has happened as part of the training program. Now finally to conclude from individual to organizational learning, this transition is important. Mainly organizational behavior our class pertains to individual dynamics but in an organizational setup, if individual learning is not translated to organizational learning, it's of no use. It's like, let's say the entire tacit knowledge is being evaporated. The entire tacit knowledge is getting uh, evaporated or it is not able to, uh, you know, organization is not able to convert that to institutional memory. So that happens, it is similar to that if an individual learning cannot be translated to organizational learning. One of the most popular contemporary perspective of organizational effectiveness is specifically organizational learning. And when we look into organizational learning, it's heavily dependent on individual learning, no doubt about it. Organization cannot learn on itself. Organization learning is essentially a function of individual learning in itself. But the capacity 
Please remember, the capacity to acquire, share and use knowledge means that the companies establish certain systems, structures and organizational values that support the knowledge management process. We'll deal this in, in greater detail in the module where we look into knowledge management specifically. But please understand, there are different aspects. At this point, I will say that there is knowledge acquisition, there is knowledge sharing, and there is knowledge use. Knowledge acquisition is mainly with respect to the propensity to gain knowledge. Within the organization, you may be more, uh, you know, induced towards learning. You may be trying to deduct something from the experiences of others. All this, both explicit and implicit, leads to knowledge acquisition. When it comes to knowledge sharing, it should be either explicit or implicit. Implicit is, is quite difficult. Explicit is, explicit is codified. You can always share it through an online platform. You can al always share it through a book or a, a certain bylaw or certain documents of the particular organization. But implicit, the tacit has to come mainly with respect to the experience-based sharing. It can come with hands-on training, it can come with proper mentoring, coaching, etc. But 100% still cannot be cannot be transferred. If you if you remember the previous lecture, the theme was when when people like Nonaka, Takuchi, etc. They have looked into knowledge sharing. Even the slightest movement of fine bakers in making a bread is relevant when it comes to the softness of the bread. Now, you, you please read through the stories of how knowledge sharing is critical in all those spheres of knowledge and knowledge management specifically. So when you look into knowledge management, knowledge acquisition is important, knowledge sharing is important, and the use of knowledge is particularly relevant. So this completes our module on learning. Let's sum it up. We looked into what learning is specifically. What is learning? What are the specific aspects related to conditioning? We looked into classical, we looked into operant, we looked into the relevance of stimulus and response. Then we took the human element into the picture. We took the, uh, we uh, understood the relevance of the human being in the picture where he started or she started to learn through the cognitive element. We looked into the social element. Human beings are essentially social beings. We looked into the social element of learning and thereby we ventured into organizational learning. So in all these aspects, please understand one thing. Learning is irrelevant if there is no behavioral change. I repeat, learning is irrelevant if there is no behavioral change. On that note, we'll end today's lecture. Please take care. And thank you for listening to me patiently. See you in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. Namaste.